Uh, one of the things that uh, I remember when I first read Dan's book, uh, this was probably in 2002 at Christmas time, was he talked about how the buffalo industry was beginning to mirror the cattle industry with animals sent to uh, feedlots and being shot up with hormones, fattened up on corn, and uh, he made a really uh, serious choice uh, to do something different, and, uh, or differently. And uh, I would just be curious to know from you, uh, what is the direction of the buffalo industry? You have uh, uh, Ted's Grill, which is Ted Turner. He's the largest, um, or he owns the most buffalo in the world. Uh, have other people begun to see your views on this and doing it in a natural way? Or is there a lot of the buffalo that's being sort of popularized and sold, uh, being uh, taken to feedlots, that kind of thing? Mm. Uh, in 2007, I believe it was, at the National Bison Association gathering, uh, this, there was a roundtable uh, discussion with many of the larger buffalo producers as well as um, NGOs, uh, Nature Conservancy, the World Wildlife Fund, um, a guy by the name of Alan Savory who does just super great things. And um, at that time, the, st the statistic was 98% of all bison raised in the country and in Canada um, were produced in the cattle feedlot model, meaning confined for the last three months of their life, fed corn, um, often given the antibiotics uh, so no disease would be encountered. Um, since 2007, um, we've gained uh, a little percentage because of the cost of fuel. And so now it's 92% of all bison raised are raised in the cattle feedlot model. So um, there's 8% 8, 8 of us out there trying to do things. You mentioned Ted Turner. And Ted Turner has done wonderful conservation um, things for the, um, the environment. But all of his bison go to the feedlot. And he says, though, as soon as the public will demand grass-only meat, he's more than happy to switch. Well... Uh, we've been, uh, you know, we were selling buffalo at the Heartland Cafe before uh, we heard about you guys. But uh, after reading your book, which my uh, lovely wife Paige gave me for Christmas, I, uh, at Dan's book, I, uh, I contacted you all. And uh, since then, we've been, uh, we've been doing Wild Idea Buffalo. So people who are familiar with the Heartland and are interested in, uh, in real good quality products from the land, uh, should know that. Jill, one of the things that I've always uh, found interesting about you, uh, not only you are a wonderful chef, uh, and you, it was great watching you uh, yesterday with all of the cooks and people in the Heartland Kitchen trying about 10 different uh, dishes that we, we hope to introduce, but you grew up on a cattle farm uh, or dairy farm in eastern South Dakota. Can you give me a little bit about your life moving from daughter of, cat, of, of dairy farmers to a uh, buffalo rancher? Uh, yes, it's a true story. Um, a dairy farmer's daughter where we used to pull on our little red rubber boots and go out and gather the dairy cows from the pasture um, with the help of my father who could get them to come just with the sound of his voice by a simple come boss. <laughs> Anyway, um, from there, moved to the big city, and um, I've always uh, what worked big city? In, Rapid City. Uh, the big city of Rapid City, <laughs> South Dakota, and uh, got involved in the restaurant industry and the hotel business, and sort of worked my my way up. I had a little restaurant um, in Rapid City, and one day a very charming man walked in the door, and he said, "My my my, what do we have here?" <laughs> and that was Dan O'Brien, and I fell for it, and so. Restaurateur meets uh, Buffalo Rancher, and uh, the rest sort of evolved from there. Well, just uh, so everyone knows, Dan O'Brien has a new book along with Michael Forsberg called The Great Plains, and it's, uh, it's a wonderful book with lots of pictures, and uh, I'm looking forward to reading that. I just want to say that Dan has written some great books, Spirit of the Hills, uh, The Contract Surgeon, The Indian Agent, and uh, that's, we'll talk about that for another time. Uh, how has uh, the economy, Jill, in our last minute, uh, tell us a little bit how the economy has affected, affected uh, people's desire to get high-grade buffalo meat from you guys? You know, that's a very good question. Um, that's why I it, asked it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and it, 
the economy has affected us. Um, however, along with the economy uh, comes this greater awareness of sustainability. And there are many labels out there, you know, there's organic and there's free range and there's all this stuff. But it, it's more of an overall sustainability and people's consciousness and awareness of the planet and how our food choices make a huge impact on the state of the planet. And so with that, um, the economic crisis has also produced an environmental awareness and they, they've sort of counterbalanced. And I think that that's the, the best thing that's come away from this um, economic crash.